Hey, this is Marissa. I want you to watch this if you feel that you're a failure, if you feel that you're always failing at something, that your life isn't going the way you want it to go. It's just not getting better. Or maybe you have achieved some success, but you don't know how to take that further. So I'm going to help you today to show you how you can learn from failure and go forwards. But first of all, let's understand what failure is because it's a very subjective word. Most people see failure as, I'm not succeeding at something. I'm not doing what others expect. I'm not even doing what I expect of myself. And other people see failure as their friend. I've, I use that word, my friend, failure, because I learned a lot about myself through many, many failures that I made. So this is really about perspective. It's about the interpretation we're putting on failing. Napoleon said, a person who never made a mistake, well, he never made anything. And a person who didn't fail didn't do anything. You see, the only way you can really fail is in failing to try. Imagine if we reverse that and said, failing to try is the same as trying to fail. If you don't try, you can't fail. But if you don't try, you can't do anything. And many of my clients say, I don't try, stay at home. I don't take risks in case I fail. And I tell them the truth, the only risk in life is not to take the risk. You can risk and fail, but you're going to learn something. If you risk something and fail, you've already immediately increased the quality of your education. If you have an issue with, I'm scared to do that in case I fail. I'm nervous about trying in case it goes wrong. Let me ask you some important questions. Where did you get this belief from? that if you try and you fail, it'll be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Many years ago when I was working on television as a therapist on many shows like Big Brother and I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, someone said, hey, do you want to be a TV presenter? I thought, wow, that's amazing. I would love that. And a lot of people would love that job of being a TV host on breakfast television. And I went along and you know I couldn't do it. I had to be so excited about a banana muffin and I tried to jump up and down and get excited and I realized very quickly, not only is, oh, this job is not for me, but I have the greatest respect for people who can do that. They have a gift and a skill set that I don't have. I'm meant to be a therapist and clearly whoever put me here said, you're not ever going to be a TV presenter. You can forget about that right now. But that was a good thing. I learned straight away that I didn't have that skill set. Set. I wasn't going to get that skill set because it didn't make my heart sing. I didn't love it. In fact, I didn't even like it. But someone else loved it. So sometimes we have to look and think, well, you know, I learned that didn't have my name on it. That is not my calling. That is not what I'm meant to do. And so many of my clients fail because they say, you know, I was born to go into the family business. It was expected I'd become a family lawyer. I'd join the accounts and I'd take over the business. In fact, my parents told me, we spent all this money on your education so you could take over your parents' business. They pushed me into being a doctor, a lawyer, and I never even thought about, did I want it? And here I am at 45 having a breakdown because this is not what makes my heart sing. So where did you get the belief that you should go into a certain business, a certain industry? Who told you that? You know, you're here to find out what you love to do and you can really only ever be good doing what you love. If you do what you hate and try to be good at it, you'll pay a terrible price, usually your health. So don't make someone else's dream your dream. Don't make someone else's story your story. Don't think I should do that because... I was watching a documentary on Paul Newman and his son Scott who actually took his own life because he wanted to be Paul Newman the second. But only Paul Newman can be Paul Newman. Scott could have been something amazing. But that's our greatest when we make someone else's dream our dream. We make someone else's story our story. I have to be like my mother, my father, my grandfather. And you can only be good at what your gift is. So here's the second question. What does success look like to you? What exactly do you want to need? What feels right? A very good question to say, what makes my heart sing? When I'm speaking on stage, I know it's what I'm meant to do because I love it so much. I say, well, how can you do that? I go, well, how can you not do it? It's the best job ever. But it's the best job ever for me because when I do it, the feeling of rightness in connecting with an audience says, oh, this is it. But I get that somebody else would hate that. What makes your heart sing? 
And when you imagine success, let me give you an example. I've trained 17,000 therapists all over the world, and some of them say, you know what success looks like to me? Being in my community, working with bullied children, working with children who have school phobias, working with unhappy teenagers, that's it. I love it so much, that's success. Others say, oh no, I want to write a book, write a program, I want to have my own blog, I want to contribute to the radio and the television, I want to be really, really big. That's what success looks like. For some people, success is a vacation. I'm a nurse, I'm a carer, I'm a family doctor. A lot of firemen say this is a vocation. I feel significant, I feel connected, I have diversity, certainty, it's exciting, and I feel that people really respect me. So what success looks like for you may look totally different to someone else. What does success look like to you? What exactly do you want to need? And you are not born to follow someone else's dream. You're born to edit your life and find out what works for you. So again, what does success look like for you? What do you want? What do you need? What would make your heart sing? What sets you on fire? What gives you that feeling of rightness? So when you step out, they go, oh, I know this is what I was meant to do. Be bold write the answers to these questions, but really go into your feelings and go back. When I was 10, what felt good? When I was nine, you know, Jo Malone, when she was eight, was already picking petals and making perfume. I was already writing books or coming up with ideas. And here's another question, Chris, what is important to you? What is important? Is it justice? Is it medicine? Is it design? Is it art? Is it helping children? What is important to you? I wanted to write a book. Why was that important? That was a good question. Like, oh, when I think about why well, I don't want to write a book at all, I want to write a best-selling book that helps people feel good about themselves. So I got my why. When Roald Dahl's son was run over, he actually created a, a medical device that's changed the world because he wanted to help his son. But in helping his son, Theo, he helped so many other people. So go back and say, why is it important? Why am I doing this? Am I doing this to please my parents? Am I doing this to make a lot of money? Am I doing this to be famous or rich? Am I doing it? And when you can identify why you're doing it, why are you doing what you're doing? Then you can really help. Many people say, you know, my own story was this happened to me. Then I created a product. If you watch that movie about the girl with Jennifer Lawrence who cut her hand squeezing out a mop, and then developed the self-squeezing mop and became a billionaire. That was her why. Sometimes people say, you know, I was so annoyed with this product that didn't work. So the why is very important. Is it environmental? What is it? And here's question four. Who do you need to become to achieve your success? Because if you want a lot of success, as a writer, for instance, then you also have to learn to be a speaker. Today, you cannot sell books if you can't be a speaker. If you want to work for yourself as a coach, you better learn to be a marketer because how will you find your clients? If you want to be an inventor, you might need to find out about funding and sponsorship and joint venture partners. So who do you need to become? I want you to look over and around and really write through those questions. And write the answers down. Put them on your screensaver. Put them in your notes. Maybe put them on your fridge. Maybe put them on your mirror so that you can see them every day. And don't just write them once. Go back and write them again and again. And then when you see the answers, they will help you take the right direction. Remember that you cannot fail. Trying to fail is no better than failing to try. Every time you try and fail, you learn something. Every time you take a risk, you understand that the biggest risk is not to take the risk at all. We've all taken risks. I've created products that have done really well and others not so much. I was watching Ed Sheeran's documentary and I highly recommend watching that and David Beckham's too because you see how they failed and failed again and indeed failed again and then came back and finally it seemed like the stars aligned and success happened but the stars didn't align. They kept going. Every time they failed, they kept going. Eminem failed so many times at being a rapper. And he actually gave Ed Sheeran great advice. He helped him. Naomi Watts said that she was almost on the brink of giving up as an actress. 
And then suddenly she got her break and again it took 12 years. So it's your tenacity. Your ability to think of yourself as a big rubber ball that bounces back. My first book was rejected over and over again. And then I got a massive book to avoid it. And I've written seven best-selling books. But if I gave up the first time when I couldn't even get that book published, Wayne Dyer couldn't get his books published. And then all of a sudden he became certainly not an overnight success. He was very much a slow burn. But a slow burn is fine. And finally, when you're going through all of this, keep remembering the magic. I'm enough. I'm enough. I'm enough. The common thread that holds us back is our fear. I'm scared of public speaking. No, you're not. You're scared of being rejected in case you're not enough. I procrastinate. I self-sabotage. No, these are the same branches of a tree that says I'm not enough. If I procrastinate, I can't fail. If I sabotage, I can't fail. If I never speak in public, write that book, invent that product, I can't fail. But instead of doing that, go to the root, the root of all of our issues, this fear of not being enough and say I'm enough, I'm enough, I'm worthy enough, good enough, smart enough, intelligent enough, bright enough, creative enough, inventive enough, lovable enough, worthy enough. Work on all of these things because the best plan in the whole world can never work if you don't. And if you do another three-step process, take some time saying you're enough. And then imagine you're taking a long, deep look with x-ray vision of what you want. Because like I said, I wanted to write a book. When I looked at that very hard, I thought, oh no, I don't want to write a book. I want to write a best-selling book that helps people. And when I knew what I really wanted and knew that I was worth it, I could do the third bit, which was write that book. And that was the easy part, taking that book to editors, finding a publisher, and then having to keep it in the bestseller charts by writing articles, going to book signings, doing more articles. I know John Gray very well, and he talks a lot about the fact that he spends more time making his books sell by writing pieces and giving talks than he ever spent writing those books. Wayne Dyer spent two years driving around America promoting his book, sleeping in different motels. But that's what he had to do. So what are you going to do? I hope this gives you an idea. It's okay to fail. It doesn't matter how much you fall down, it's how quickly you get back up again. Success is not never failing. Success is how quickly you get back on track. And here's the statement I love. The lift to success is frequently out of order, but you know what? The stairs always work. I love that. So if you're failing, it means you are growing. Google all the people who failed dramatically, failed and failed and gone bankrupt and failed again and then come back. Walt Disney was one of those, by the way. If you have failed, it means you're growing, you're moving forwards, and the fact that you failed at one thing doesn't mean you can't have massive, phenomenal success at another. Make your answers visible. Put them in your notes, put them on your screensaver, put them on your phone wallpaper, put them on your fridge, write them on your mirror. I want you to see these answers, but again, I want you to make constant and never ending improvement. Let me update the answers. Let me elaborate on the answers. Let me go back and answer them again. I might have different answers today than I had yesterday. So make your answers visible, revisit them, redo them. When you do this, you are moving towards success and success is definitely moving towards you because you're expanding who you are. When you expand like that, you can't contract and expand. You can expand or you can contract. These answers are expanding you towards success. So keep revisiting them, keep looking at them, keep them somewhere visible and they will help you grow and expand. And that's a constant process. And finally, Join a peer group. Great name, don't you think? When I was trying to get a book deal, I joined a peer group and they made me accountable. And you know, if you have an accountability buddy, your chance of success goes up by a whopping 75%. So maybe you can make a comment on this and say, hey, who wants to be my accountability? And I'll be theirs, of course. When someone holds you accountable and you have a peer group, a success group, they will help you grow from your failures and move towards success. Because as you go to success, I promise it will simultaneously come towards you as long as you follow all the steps in this talk I'm giving you today. Failure can be your friend if it takes you where you should be, not where you think you should be. And I wish you massive success, grow in success. Being successful, there is no end, there's no terminal. 
Let me know how you get on. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.